What's up fam? Welcome back to another video. We are going to talk about Neptune and Neptune going into the sign of Aries in the year 2025. If I'm not mistaken, it's happening on March 30th, 2025. And I really wanted to talk about this and this energy because Neptune is just a really interesting energy that we have to deal with as a generation. Not only on a daily basis do we have to deal with it, we have to deal with it as a collective. Okay, Neptune takes about 168 years to transit through all the 12 signs, making it about 14 years to transit one sign. So 14 years in Aries, 14 years in Taurus, 14 years in Gemini, and so on and so forth. So this is what makes it a very much a generational aspect because a lot of us deal with it we all a lot of us grew up with the same kind of idea of neptune or how we want to approach neptune now neptune is originally a part of uh the sign of pisces okay co-ruled with jupiter now what is neptune neptune is represented by the clouds and the fog it's represented by mystery, by vagueness, um, distortion. Neptune is where our imagination comes from. This is, you know, where we either are on the side of fear or on the side of faith. It is the great unknown because Neptune, you know, Pisces is the last stop. So it's the great, great, great unknown. And Neptune is about dissolving and softening, okay? Um, it's about the self undoing and where, you know, does it really all matter? That's what Neptune is about. Neptune is related to um, narcotics, drugs, the pharmacies, pharmaceuticals, but it's also in the same essence related to spirituality, faith, church, because there's only two ways to basically deal with life. You know what I'm saying? Um, you either get lost in your addictions, in your coping mechanisms, because you have fear of the great unknown around death around God, around the universe, around how and what life is. And, you know, one doesn't want to address it. And then it's either, you know, you address it head on and you engage with it and you really tap into that energy. And this is really where your intuition is. You know, it's like, how is our body breathing still? How are we still moving? How are we still, you know, interacting and walking? And how are our bodies here on earth? And how are we one planet out of many planets and one galaxy out of millions of galaxies, you know, is, the, is those endless, limitless questions. And this is why Neptune and Pisces is all about boundlessness, right? And when you have, and, and that's what Pisces energy is about. It's, this is why there's always this idea of vagueness and not being clear when we're talking about Neptune. And I have a whole video on this. Um, called the Age of Pisces that I did with Astro D's and I put it in the com and I put it in the link below so you guys can check it out where we go really in depth on what all of this kind of stuff means. So Neptune is this really nebulous planet that causes chaos because with confusion comes chaos. You know, you're not clear, you don't know what's going on, and this is where the lies and manipulation come in, and this is where scandals fall, and this is where then um, because one doesn't know how to react, you know, one wants to, this is the flight, you know what I'm saying? It's either fight or flight <laughs> um, with this kind of thing. So Neptune is um, on the high vibration. It's our ability to be compassionate, our ability to really understand that we are all one and we all operate as one together and there is nothing that is separate and that and that love is unconditional and having love for oneself is having love for everybody else 
And this is why Venus is exalted in Pisces because it's all about, or Venus, you know, with the contact to Neptune, uh, especially a good aspect, you know, and in, in, in a good placement, like in a healthy placement for Venus and or Pisces. This person is really unconditional when it comes to love. You know, they, these pr people can bring in people, want to foster people, um, want to help the homeless. Um, you know, these are people who have long lost loves in jail and in prison, things like that, or, you know, will fight for their person who has gone through addiction and homelessness and, you know, all that other stuff. Um, you know, and the dark, the, 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 now the, the dark side, I'm going to say it, the dark side of it is also, like you said, abuse. Okay. Um, abuse of the vagueness and the unclarity and making the confusion the norm you know but the high vibrational of it is neptune heals it allows you to access your spirituality it allows you to access the great beyond it allows you to access god you know, that's what Neptune is about when you don't run on the side of fear anymore and you really run on the side of faith. You understand that everything is perfect the way that it is, even the chaos, even the destruction, even the confusion, even the lies and the manipulation, um, the vagueness. There is a beauty in all of that because it's all God's plan. It's all a part of the perfection anyway, uh, you know, and so... Next one is, is really subtle. It's so subtle that we accept a lot of things, okay? And we are in the age of Pisces still, all right? Um, and you guys should definitely look at where your Neptune is placed because it's going to be there for a few more years and then it's going to come out of, you know, there into Pisces. So I have this article that I found and I want to link it below of a couple of, you know, historical moments from Neptune being in different signs. So when Neptune moved into Gemini in the 19, uh, excuse me, when Neptune moved into Gemini in the 1890s, William Randolph Hearst, um, there was a phenomenon called the yellow journalism where it's, this is where scandalism started. Tabloids, this was the birth of tabloids. Okay, in the 1890s, when Neptune goes into Gemini, because what it is, what is Neptune? Like I said, it's all the things. It's your imagination. It also rules um, photography, film. It rules art. Okay, this is like where these artists and everything could really be, you know, super talented. This is what that Neptune energy is. Ooh, sorry guys, that's so annoying to me. Anyway, so. You're like, why'd you point it out, Nobi? My bad. My Virgos are stressed out right now. So this is when sensationalism began in the media. And Gemini rules the media communication. It rules how we translate our ideas, okay? It rules also our education. Um, now, what else does it say? It also says here that, okay, Neptune and Aries, in 1861 coincided with the American Civil War. 1914, Neptune was in Leo for World War I, and then Charlie Chaplin's first film was out. Okay, um, Leo represents the performer, the stage. It also represents the government, control, um, you know, childhood, and I'm sure the childhood was destroyed at that time, and it was like vague, you know. 1929, Neptune moved into Virgo, and this was the end of the Roaring Twenties, and this led into the Great Depression. Uh, the first color television demos and first BBC TV transmission arrived on the scene. So now the way this works out is, um, you know, Pisces and Net Pisces and Virgo are opposite each other, so they're sister signs. 
So now Neptune goes into Virgo. Virgo is all about paying attention to detail and making sure that everything is exactly the way that it needs to be. Very controlled, very step-by-step, -step, book by book, minute by minute. Neptune goes there, it disrupts that entire flow. This can cause, you know, Mercury is your mind and Neptune is there causes vagueness to your mind this is depression because you don't know where you are now you're operating out of fear you know what i'm saying and um and guilt and shame and this is the the feeling that one has also that first color television demo you know virgo is paying attention to detail doing something new uh, mercury is communication once again and you know this is tv media coming out so that is like um, getting it to the next level because Gemini is the first octave of Mercury. Then there is Virgo. It's the second octave is like taking it to the next level. Now in 1942, Neptune moved into Libra and that was during World War II when the Holocaust got underway. So that literally destroyed um, relationships it destroyed the way people interacted with each other and people's trust with one another um, greatly at that time. Okay, Libra is separation, you know, and then Neptune is there. So it, it really created this manipulation, mind control, all right manipulating people into doing certain things and um yeah and you know on the opposite side is aries and like we said aries is war rage um you know violence so this was uh, you know the same thing but manipulated and cloaked as some kind of you know it was mind control and then what are, what's another example I can give you guys? Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else that I want to... I mean, there's more. There's obviously way more on here. Oh, here we go. In 1970, Neptune moved into Sagittarius when the first Earth Day was celebrated for environmental protection. So that was is the high vibration of Neptune, right? Um, healing Sagittarius global right at the earth healing the earth globally and sending that message out and really wanting to make that happen um, protecting the environment and getting everyone involved and educating the world on what's happening with that so with Neptune going into Aries you know in 2025 it's going to be quite interesting because now Neptune and Aries is going to challenge the identity that you form for yourself. Your identity is going to dissolve. It's going to um, come undone. The person that you have identified yourself with. Right now we have Chiron and Aries and um, that is opening the wound to to making sure you pay attention to the wound in your identity at first and then neptune is going to come in there and either exacerbate it making it making you more um you know creating a bigger delusion around it creating a better bigger illusion around your identity and your identity issues and your and the way who you think that you are and the way that you think that you should stand up for yourself and attack life and all of those things because Aries is about being first and you know your spark in life it's about uh, showing up and showing who you are and Neptune can can distort that depending on which placements you have on a personal level it can really challenge um everything that you are if you haven't committed to healing yourself okay if this is going to either heighten your addictions or heighten your healing when neptune goes into aries in 2025 because people are going to be more delusional they are going to be more um 
they're they're going to be they're going to be lying to themselves even more on the low vibrational side the low vibrational side is the, they're going to be manipulating themselves into taking actions very spontaneous impulsive actions uh life-changing violent actions you know this is where the civil war came from because people were fighting for their independence fighting uh to free and dissolve the chains uh and the bondage the enslavement that people were experiencing and so this cycle is coming up once again to see if we've dissolved those chains properly or not and so when neptune moves into aries it's going to create a mist a fog in everyone's life and everyone's identity and you're really gonna have to trust your intuition at that point that's the point that's why all of this is happening right now this is strengthening your intuition this is you getting ready for neptune in aries to come because when it does it's you have to heal yourself you have to soldier for yourself you have to guide yourself on this journey this doesn't mean that people won't be around. Absolutely, people will be around. But Aries is about new beginnings. It's about a rebirth. It's about uh, new ideas, new seeds, and every man for himself. Because Aries is about the loner. Okay, I got to do this on my own. Even though you have Libra on the other side and you're relating to other people, you still have to remember that it's, it's about, first of all, a drastic shift from the Pisces narrative of, you know, which Neptune and Pisces is strengthened. This is why martyrdom, victimhood, suffering, um, you know, savior complex, all of these things are major, major, major themes. And we are quote unquote, okay with interacting with each other this way. Watch the Age of Pisces video for more information. But when Neptune moves into Aries, there's gonna be a drastic change in the qualities and, and the way that we um, are seen as individuals you know and it's going to be more rugged you know there's going to be way more spiritual leaders that are going to come up and this is why you got to watch your discernment you know during this whole time because there's going to be no new people coming up who are going to be leading and you have to make sure that they are leading with intention for the individual to heal themselves, okay? This is going to be um, the people that, this is when people fight for their spirituality. They fight for, or they fight for their fears, you know? You're fighting either out of guilt or shame or you're fighting for, uh, for compassion and unconditional love. And, and, and the thing is, Aries rules weapons and war, all those things. And, and there's deaf people will go to war for that kind of thing. Absolutely. So um, this is really making sure that your survival instincts and your intuition is sharpened prior to even getting there and, and, and really seeing what's going on and feeling out the energy of the world and where it's going. Chiron in Aries is it's painful right now to do this deep healing, but you have to open the wound. Right now, the wound has to be opened so that so that the healing can start to begin, so that you can start getting grounded for that healing to begin. Because when Chiron moves into Taurus, honey, I'll make a video on that. That's gonna challenge your entire comfort zone. It's gonna challenge your entire comfort zone, everyone's entire comfort zone, you know? So that's when that's when the wound of greed is going to be challenged when the chiron goes into taurus so that's why right now with chiron and aries you really have to pay attention to rip it you have to rip your own band-aid off you know because when neptune and aries comes you need to be prepared to start healing yourself and even getting obviously now in the mode of healing yourself and the way that you heal yourself is really by for me it's the sixth house okay i'm always into the sixth house i feel like the sixth house is such a great self-care house all right really making sure that you're paying attention to your own needs and what you need to do to really get your energy sitting right for the day so you can receive the messages the way that you need to receive them um really committing to your own healing 
you know, Aries is about the athlete. <laughs> so that's why I've been saying working out, uh, you know, endurance. Really, Aries is a new beginning. So you got to get your survival skills up. You know, you got to get your survival skills up. Um, because it's about action. Hmm. And that's what it is. It's no more, it, Pisces takes a nap, you know, Aries gets shit done. That's usually how it goes. Pisces dreams it up, Aries puts it into play. So a lot of people who've been talking about healing, it will be revealed if it's been healing or you've just been dealing healing, okay? Or if you've really been going through it. And healing is not about being perfect. It's about accepting who you are, thus accepting everybody for who they are and working with that energy and not putting yourself at uh, at disposal, you know, for no reason at all. So with Neptune and Aries, it's about really going back to I'm telling you, with this Uranus and Taurus, you know, it's already shaking up and creating sudden changes to our, to the way that we live our life every day, that we live our practical life, like down to the damn toilet paper that we use. You know, Uranus is shaking that shit up. So it's like, hold on, hold on. Do you need all this? Are you hoarding? Are you hoarding? Are you hoarding? Uranus is asking, awaken, awaken the fact that you're hurting Mother Earth. You're hoarding. And so that's where minimalism is coming from and that's when this neptune and aries is coming in you really have to learn how to make your own solves and and make your own po lotions and make your own food and and just really learn how to heal yourself do not depend on other people to heal you that's really what that energy is about make sure that you can take care of yourself that's why all this six house energy is so important that's why the universe that's why god is giving everyone time to really get to know themselves to really get to know who they are on a deeper level so that they know their inner needs so that they know how to trust their intuition because neptune in aries is either going to illuminate your delusions or illuminate all the work you've done to heal yourself and don't trust me, we're all still going to be like, oh shit, I'm lying to myself right there. Shit, I'm manipulating myself. You know, th that's definitely going to come up. But when that moves through, you're going to be able to really uh, understand where you've been lying to yourself. <laughs> Straight up. Um, you know, and yes, because obviously Aries rules the head it rules fast rash actions you know it rules uh <laughs> punching motherfuckers first before asking them any goddamn questions it rules uh violence and war you know you can make really rash decisions when it comes to what your idea of healing is or even rash decisions going out at night you know this is accidents while partying type of energy like going out with the wrong people, especially if, if you don't have good aspects to Mars, things like that, or Mars in the 12th house, stuff like that. Neptune, you know, you have Aries in the 12th house. This is not a great time for you to be uh, drinking like that at all or being on pills or, you know, doing any type of drugs like that. You really need to maintain clarity. Okay. Um, until... Neptune is in Taurus, and now that's a different story. Neptune in Taurus is more about, you know, healing yourself through foods, healing yourself through practical, real things. Like, this is holistic health, you know. Um, Neptune in Pisces is mental health. Neptune in Earth signs is like holistic health. That's why Neptune in Pisces rules pharmaceuticals and pills, narcotics, Things like that, they you know, made up almost drugs, chemicalized drugs, things that come out the imagination when you have Neptune and Virgo. These are people who want to be very pure, who want to be very holistic, vegan, GMO free, organic, stuff like that. So 
as Neptune and Pisces is where we all lying to ourselves. Where's the manipulation? How are we manipulating ourselves? Where are we playing victim, martyr, suffering and creating suffering for ourselves? Where are we having a God complex? That's Neptune and Pisces, right? Like trying to save everybody type of thing. And then Neptune and Aries is learning how to save your motherfucking self and learning how to stand up for yourself and, and putting energy into your own healing, right? And really breaking your own delusions, your own lies, breaking the way that you uh gone about spirituality that your val uh, how your values are you know there's a new beginning for neptune there's a new imagination a new a new world for you you know and for all of us that's what's going to happen um it's going to create a fire re spiritual awakening on this whole earth you know and it's going to erupt in a lot of different ways and a lot of different ways and then when Neptune goes into Taurus, this is all about, like I said, real life healing, like putting things into after Aries is action, you know, Neptune and Taurus is going to slow it down and really buckle down and ground it and make it real. You know, I really can see sometime in our future, like real schools surrounded of healing, like, uh, like literally going like healing being such a normal part of our lives hey did you go get a massage did you go get a, did you do this did you, it, it won't be looked at as a luxury anymore it will be looked at as a basic need a necessity healing will be a necessity a basic need a need to survive okay with neptune and aries it's a need to survive spirituality will be a need for you to survive or else you're going to keep spinning lie after lie after lie but there's there'll be short lies because aries is not about sus uh, sustaining things right you know what i'm saying it's about initiating and planting that seed so for those 14 years that that seed that you're planting that spiritual seed that seed of forgiveness and compassion with yourself you know what i'm saying is really where it starts because we can only plant, see a new beginning if we see things within ourselves and we see a new way for ourselves and we release things within us. So, you know, and then when Neptune goes into Taurus, honey, I mean, we're going to be eating good, honey. <laughs> we're going to be eating good, looking good, shiny. It's going to come out. It's going to physically come out the work that's going to be uh, going to have been done at that time. You know, um, it's it's going to be about, OK, we really want to integrate these things into our lives that's why if you are a person with these kind of placements with these kind of passions of having um you know being an herbalist uh, botany uh, doing any kind of holistic health holistic restaurants holistic um type of thing it's absolutely necessary because in the future that's what people are going to want and need in my personal opinion um <clears throat> people are going to want to uh, go back to farming <laughs> and go back to the simple life and having land and slowing things down and living more of a simplistic lifestyle. But before all of that can happen, we have to disrupt our values. We have to really rip off the bandage of our identity and who we have chosen to be and ask if this is working anymore for where our conscious evolution is at for where we are individually and then obviously as a collective but then going from the collective actually going into action as an individual and making it happen for yourself so neptune and aries in 2025 is asking you to show up to heal yourself to be to take independent action to make sure that you face your lies and your delusions head on and your fears and your guilt and your shame head on and um, releasing that and having a new idea and a new beginning, a new uh, inspiration, a new vision of how spirituality can become real for you and grounded for you in, you know, um, 14 years after that, what is that? Yeah, 2039, right? 2039 is when it goes into Taurus. So how it will become really real for you. And this is not that you can't do things in between that absolutely you can because everyone's placements are different. But I'm saying that's just the overall energy and where we're going. So if you have visions for, you know, that kind of very simple lifestyle, we're heading there. Where That's where we're going. Um, our values are going to be challenged. Our greed is going to be challenged. The way we treat the homeless, poverty, 
the ill-stricken um, is going to be challenged. Neptune in Aries is going to make you see the pain and the guilt and the fear of the individual. You will not be able to deny it anymore. You won't be able to pull the you know wool over your eyes too much anymore. People will call you out. They will they will be action oriented. Um, people will be you know standing up for healing they will be loud about it aries and bold about it you know they will be out there about it so that's what this energy is is really on and i'm feeling it let me know what you guys think about this video and i will talk to you guys soon bye